Partnerships are vital to our global outreach, enabling us to take the love and hope of Jesus Christ to those who need it most. Our Boots on the Ground Partnership Program physically ministers to those in desperate situations all over the world. The Israel Partnership furthers Kim's legacy of outreach to Israel and Jewish people worldwide. We invite you to become a partner today. Join us today and be part of a community that inspires hope, brings restoration to life and often healing from the past. Together we can make a difference and we thank you for your ongoing support. Welcome to Real Life, Real Faith. As always, I'm joined by Pastor Fa and Bree, and we're very, very happy to be with you guys today. Today, I am going to be talking about and opening up the conversation to a topic. I mean, we kind of do do heavy topics here in general, but like that's kind of the point. That's the name of the show, like Real Life, Real Faith. <laughs> um, we're talking about pushing through pain. And there's a scriptural foundation that I want to give you. I'm just going to read the scripture real quick, and then we're going to talk about it. And it's, to me, probably one of the most tragic stories in all of Scripture, actually. And this is Ezekiel chapter 24. Don't worry, it's not a vision or anything. This is actually an account of what happened to Ezekiel. Verse 15, The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, with one blow I am about to take away from you the delight of your eyes. Mm. Yet do not lament or weep or shed any tears. Groan quietly, do not mourn for the dead. Keep your turban fastened and your sandals on your feet. Do not cover the lower parts of your face or eat the customary food of mourners. Verse 18, so I spoke to the people in the morning and in the evening my wife died. The next morning I did as I had been commanded. And then in verse 24, God speaking to the people said, Ezekiel will be a sign to you. You will do just as he has done. When this happens, you will know that I am the sovereign Lord. And you know, Ezekiel was this prophet. There's not really an account of him ever doing anything wrong. And it, it speaks about how he, God called Ezekiel's wife the delight of his eyes meaning they must have been happy. This is my, you know, I've read commentaries on and that kind of thing on this because this particular story has always intrigued me so intensely. But there's no way that Ezekiel didn't go through a pain that probably could not be put into words because the person that was his comfort, the person that delighted him was taken away to be a sign to a group of people that were disobeying God and disobeying the voice of God's prophet giving them his message. And this happened not because Ezekiel did anything wrong, but because his life as a prophet is that he was called to be a sign to other people. So imagine that, and I, I know that some of you have experienced that, and I'm sure we all have at some point, when you end up going through pain, not as a result of your own doing, but as the result of somebody else, that is a difficult thing to have to push through. Mm -hmm. And so the question that I'm sort of posing to the group now is, how do I push through that pain, whether emotional or physical? Now, notice I didn't say push away the pain. I said push through because we can shut things out and push things away and, you know, pile things under the rug until it's the size of a mountain. But that doesn't mean we're dealing with it or going through it. And so this is something that I've thought about so many times. And when I've taught on the prophets, it's always something that's completely intrigued me. But how do we do that? How do we actually face the pain that we're experiencing and push through it. Pastor Fah, I'll start with you. I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> that was my answer. That, that's my answer too, but Ladies. here we are. <laughs> no, I, you know, we were talking before we actually began the broadcast. I mean, what's it like to have a baby? Can you use that analogy Oof. of pushing mm -hmm. this child out? I mean, I'm, you know, standing there and it's like, I'm helpless. And in those days, it was like, Everything was natural, you know. So <clears throat> my wife, she went, really went through it with um, two out of three of the kids. The third one came in 58 minutes. Wow. But Rena must have taken <laughs> 48 hours. Ooh. I don't know. It was, Goodness yeah, gracious. it was pretty tough. But wow. we can't relate. Guys can't relate to what you ladies have been through. And, um, but there must be, there must be some, something redemptive. <laughs> I brought this up for, mm -hmm. I mean, because clearly uh, that child is just, who can put in words that blessing that comes at the end of the pain. And, and certainly I don't celebrate pain. I don't want pain, mm. 
But I do have to say that it seems like in life, um, a lot of our advancements, a lot of our blessings, pain is involved, you know? Mm -hmm. It's very difficult when it's um, someone else's fault, seemingly. Yeah. Um, I think... Ezekiel's wife had a gambling problem, and no, I'm just joking. I'm just joking, but um, I, I can't, I can't uh, fathom what people go through. We get emails; it breaks my heart. You know, not that people are, you know, it, but they tell their story, and we all have gone through pain. And all I can say is, like, I just watched that movie. I think it was boys in a boat or whatever, something like that. But they all clearly had to be together. And um, what gets me through my pain is um, my loved ones, people that uh, can speak into my life and, you know, smile at me and make me feel like, you know, you're going to get through this. Mm -hmm. And we do. I'm still yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Bree? Well... Tagging on what you were talking about, about basically everything good, pain is somewhere to be yeah. found. I think of the gym. Oh, yeah. The most painful place. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I think of. <laughs> um, but you push through it because you know the results yeah. that you're going to have. And just like with children, you know, you see them hurting and you would gladly take that from them to push through it on your own account so that way they can be free. And when I think of it in a ministry point of view, I would get so upset um, watching my family go through some of the things that they would have to go through in ministry, pastoring or in leadership. Mm. And something would happen that would cause my dad pain. Mm. And I didn't have nothing to do with it, but I was the watching kid it. and watching mm -hmm. it. And it affected my life. Mm -hmm. yep. And I went through pain because of yes. something else. And I would always get so upset. And I would ask my dad, you know, why is this happening? Why is this happening? And he said, you're going through it to help someone else who is about to go through mm -hmm. it. And so sometimes our pain is caused by someone else, but... On the flip side is sometimes we go through pain for someone else. Yeah. To teach, to be an example. We face things in our life that we have no idea that in 25 years our kids will go through something similar. And we say, hang on, hang on. Before you do this, mm -hmm. let me tell you about this. I've been here. I've done it. And you realize, okay, now I get why I had to push through that pain. Even if it was 20 years in mm -hmm. you know, effect, there is reasoning behind the pushing. Yeah. And that's, it's, it's for someone else and sometimes caused by someone else. I think of the Apostle Paul just asking God to take this thing away, you know? Yeah. The thorn and I mean, he was who he was, right? Yeah. So, I mean, some great men in Scripture have definitely wrestled with some big problems and it was challenging for them. So, you're in, in good company. It's it's so true. And just looking at these examples, the reason that, you know, I so often go to like these accounts in scripture is because I say it so often, if you're going through something like this, if there's emotional pain or physical pain or psychological pain or whatever it is, that doesn't mean you're doing something wrong. And it doesn't mean that God's mad at you. And it doesn't mean that you're, you know, in trouble now. Jordan Peterson says it all the time. He talks about how there is so much suffering in life. And something's happened in our culture where everybody expects not to have to suffer. Mm -hmm. Everybody has this very high expectation that it's I fruit. should be happy. You know, there's an expectation of that and that's become the predominant focus. But, you know, that's not the way life's always been. <laughs> it's always been a struggle from when the fall happened. We're talking about post-Genesis 3 here. It was a little while where everything was perfect and lovely. And then the wretched snake came and the fruit and all these things that we know happened. But from then, there's been pain involved, pain in childbearing, 
pain and work and mm. the toil, you know, the soil being cursed and, you know, Adam being told you're going to have to work hard for work. this. There's, there's yes. pain involved in that. Yeah. I don't think that was part of the original design. Yeah. I think it was meant to be that there was only joy that was brought forth as a result of doing the thing that your hands were set out to do, that God ordained you to do. But there is... There's a strange expectation in our culture, I think, more so now than ever before, I think ever in, in history, yes. where there's such a, there's, there's an expectation of ease and there's an expectation of quick happiness. Yeah. And we don't see that here. We don't, we don't see that evidence, you know, for the, for the Israelites to get to the promised land, God is God. He could have sent a couple of really big eagles to pick everybody up and pluck them right out of Egypt and drop them off on a nice mountain somewhere. But they had to walk through the wilderness. We've spoken about this before, the wilderness experience, but they had to walk through a sea. And that sounds so exciting. Oh, walk through the sea. Well, not if you're <laughs> terrified of water. <laughs> not if you're trying to get, I mean, imagine taking children yeah. from, from a desert yeah. through a sea and then into the great unknown, not knowing then the Egyptians come chasing you. Like it sounds really dramatic and exciting, but I imagine the amount of, maybe it's just because I'm highly anxious, but I always just think about the stress of like, I probably overthink this too, but I'm like, imagine trying to drag a kid and like a goat through the red, like through the Red Sea, just on dry land. Yes, cool, it's dry land, but there's also giant walls of water all around you. Who knows what kind of wildlife is lurking about there? You don't know where you're going. You know what you're leaving and now they're chasing you. Like there's always some kind of pain to get to the promise. And so pushing through pain to get to the promise is part of what we have to do. And I can't give you a breakdown analysis as to why. I don't know why we're wired the way we are. I don't know why things have gone the way they have, but I do know that God is faithful and I do know that our hope can only be placed in Him, not in the country we live in or the city or the house, not based on who the president is, not based on the economic climate. It has to be based on who God is because everything else is constantly shifting, right. constantly. But He's the same, He's consistent. So my encouragement to you today, when you're pushing through pain, everybody's got pain in some form, but when you're pushing through it, know that you're not alone. You're surrounded, like Pastor Foss said, you're in good company. All the people that we look at as examples in scripture went through these kinds of things as well. You're not alone and it doesn't mean God's mad at you. Reach out, you're welcome to email us. You can always write us at real life, real faith at houseofdestiny.org. We will pray with you. My encouragement is reach out and just don't go through it alone. And speaking of, you know, reaching out, connecting, Part of it is feeding our souls. That's another important thing to do. We have this book available, Prophetic Revelations from uh, the pen of Kim Clement. It's a collection of letters. It's a really, really incredible book that's new here at the ministry. And it's a collection of writings of Kim's that he sent to his staff, that he sent to some of his uh, partners from a long time ago that were never released publicly. And now they've been comp compiled into a book form. And I'll just... I'll just do this because we actually haven't done this, but some of the some of the the titles are actually I just looked at this one, the gift of pain, page seventy three. Wow. So for your gift of twenty five dollars <laughs> or more, you can get this too and read it. And I was like, oh, I actually need to go read that one now, the gift of pain. But we've got God's translators, paint your future, invisible motion. There's so many incredible things in this book, and I cannot encourage you strongly enough to make sure that you get a copy. A gift of twenty five dollars or more is going to get you get you one of these and I really know it's gonna bless your heart and bless wherever you are at in life. There's something in there for everybody. But yes, wherever you're at, if you're pushing through pain, you don't have to do it alone. It doesn't mean that you've done anything wrong. It doesn't mean God's upset at you. And I pray that this week, especially now, we're about to go into a time of worship. I pray that the peace of God would be released over you and that that soothing balm of Gilead that's spoken of in the scriptures would be poured out into your life, into any area that you need healing. And so we say God bless you and we'll see you next week at Real Life, Real Faith. If I could have anything, let it be your eyes on me. Every time I catch your gaze, my world starts changing. I don't have that much to bring, just a simple song to sing. If I could have anything, let me be an offering Let me be an offering Let me be an No
To celebrate the new year, we're having the biggest sale ever on overstock clearance and brand new products. For example, save 60% on our Goose Down comforters, the best comforters ever. They go perfectly with our My Pillow bed sheets and duvet covers. Save 25% on our brand new kitchen towels. They're made with the same technology as our famous My Towels. Our initial quantities are extremely low, so get them now before they go. Our seasonal flannel sheets are finally in. You save up to 50% and they sell out fast every year, so order now. They're truly the best flannel sheets you'll ever sleep on. Or save up to 80% on all our clearance items. And this is where it gets even better. For a limited time, your entire order ships absolutely ab free. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use that promo code to get deep discounts on all MyPillow products. And for a limited time, your order ships absolutely free. We here at the House of Destiny are partnering with you to let our, our viewers, of course, know about your company. It's Beverly Hills Precious Metal. Andrew, explain how that works. So I'll walk you through it right now. So if you go to bh-pm.com, right there on the homepage, you'll see a form that you could fill out. And that form is very important in letting us know how we can help you. So you just put in your first name, last name, email address, phone number. There's a section that says, how did you hear about us? And in there, put Kim Clement. And then there's a portion where you could write a couple of notes down on the bottom, usually within about about 24 to 48, 48 hours, we'll contact you by phone call, and then we'll go over everything with you. This isn't a high pressure deal. We always recommend that uh, if you feel uncomfortable, take a step back, pray about it. You will gain the answers that you need by doing that and come back to us when you're comfortable. 